Hello and welcome to MaryCast. Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. Happy to be with you. Today, my friends, we have a very basic, relevant, time-sensitive question. This is a question that people have been asking me, writing in, calling in, and uh, I think it's a question that we've got to take on head on, and that is, what is going on in the world right now? What do you think is happening on a world scene? What do I mean specifically? Well, let's just kind of connect the dots a little bit. All right, in the, in, in the last uh, three or four months, uh, full extension, six, six month period of time, what has happened in the world? Well, we've had a massive earthquake in Haiti, then we've had a massive earthquake in Chile. Then we had a great loss of life through an earthquake in Turkey. Then we had a massive earthquake in China, uh, over a thousand people dead. To couple that, you've had this new uh, attack on the church uh, with a viciousness that hasn't been known in modern history. Uh, which is fundamentally based on fallacious, uh, fictional material regarding the Pope. This does not at all discredit the true and horrendous evil that comes from sexual abuse, and we've talked about that many times. Uh, I'm talking about the broad stroke of association to the person and office of Pope Benedict. Now, along with this, we've had rather unusual situations like um, a volcano erupting in Iceland, uh, stopping air traffic, like the likes of which have never been known before in aviation history. Uh, you've had meteors uh, going through six states, from Wisconsin to Missouri, lighting up the sky. Um, you've also had over seven-point earthquakes in places like Mexico and Indonesia, which, thanks be to God, have not had a, a great loss of life. Uh, but my friends, let me just mention, there's no such thing as earthquake season. Uh, it's not like hurricane season. Uh, these are exceptional. They're unprecedented, not only in their proximity, but they're also unprecedented in terms of proximity and loss of life. What's going on? What's taking place? Why so much so soon? Well, there's a couple options. One option is, all coincidence. No real meaning in it, nothing to, 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 to really take focus on. The second option is to see it more, I think, through the eyes of how God has used things of nature in the past. And at least to say, at least to say, it's time we pay more attention to heaven, to our souls, to our rosaries, to going to mass, to things past this life and time we take less, we give less attention to money, worldly power, what other people think of us in terms of reputation when it causes us to not live the fullness of our Catholic faith in life, and also to thank God for each day, a new gratitude. I believe that our Lord is letting these things happen. Remember, it's easy in theology. It's either God's ordained will or God's permitted will. God's ordained will means this is going to happen uh, regardless of what man or does or does not do. That's category A. That's God's ordained will. It's going to happen. God's permitted will, sometimes called conditional will, is either that if man cooperates in a certain way, then God will allow a certain thing to happen, or that God permits a certain evil to take place. He doesn't will it directly, but he permits an evil to take place for the sake of a greater good. I think there's a lot that's happening in that third category today. That God is, in a certain sense, withholding His protection. God is allowing things to happen. Why? Because He so much loves us. He so much wants our attention. And He doesn't love us and want our attention because He's an egotistical God. It's because we desperately need to focus our hearts back on Him than on the things that are occupying our lives, which are principally power and sometimes drugs and sex and... Uh, worldly pursuits, worldly careers that go with this life. Sometimes God has to allow the 
the immediate and tragic loss of life for some to awaken the hearts of the rest of humanity and saying, what's going on? What's happening down here? Why am I on earth? The things that concern me, the things that are the five most important things on my list, are they eternal or are they temporal? Is it time for me to start examining my relationship with God, uh, my relationship with the church, and my uh, need to make some major changes in my life? In short, I think God wants us looking up. And sometimes to look up, God has to slow us down. And that can be things like having a volcano erupt which stops traffic control so we don't think that we are ultimately in charge of our daily planners. Sometimes it means allowing loss of life so that we can consider how precious life is and what we're doing with our lives. And sometimes it can mean economic disaster. Of course, we're seeing that happen worldwide. Um, it's very interesting. Some optimists are saying, I wouldn't even say optimists, I would just say people perhaps with uh, either confusion or agenda saying, oh, it looks like we're just turning the corner with the economic system. That's not the cry of daily individuals and uh, household individuals saying, I'm not keeping up. The, the uh, foreclosure rate is up 35% in our country. They're expecting 11 million homes in the United States to be repossessed. So what does all this mean? I think allow, God is allowing this to take place for the sake of us looking up and looking to heaven. And I would end this by saying this, in peace and in joy. Number one, when we see that God's in charge and we put our lives right with Him, we go back to Mass, we go back to praying. Many of us haven't gone to confession in a long time and it would be a very good thing for us to do. When we start praying, that's when we're going to have peace and joy regardless of what happens on the outside. We can't control things like volcanoes or earthquakes. And you know what? We can't even control the economic system. We can control our prayer life. We can control our priorities. And that's what God's giving us an opportunity to do. Secondly, my friends, I say with the deepest sense of commitment and, and um, conviction of heart, we need Our Lady. The Blessed Mother said at Fatima that she was the means by which peace would enter the world. Only she can help you. She says the same thing at Akita, the Fatima of the East in the 1970s. Only she can help you from the calamities that approach. We can either ignore her messages or we can wait until they're fulfilled. She would like us to act on them. Ultimately, my friends, the single most important thing you can do for affecting a mitigation of some of the difficulties coming ahead and also the graces of peace and joy, which we should all have and want everyone to have during this time, yes, it is to pray and fast and petition for the proclamation of the Fifth Marian Dogma. Why am I so clear that's the remedy? Because it's what Our Lady herself says. She says it in her apparitions. She says it in the apparitions of Amsterdam, where she has said that without this proclamation of the dogma, peace will not enter the world. So pray that the Pope will use his power of Peter, the keys of the kingdom, which Peter alone has, to solemnly define this dogma. On your part, pray your rosary every day for this dogma, uh, Include it in your mass intentions, with your sacrifice. Those of you who are sick, uh, you have a power that many of us don't have. Offer your sufferings for the Pope and for this uh, papal definition. Um, and petition. You can send a petition into the Holy Father. You can go to uh, fifthmarindogma.com or you can go to motherofallpeoples.com and do an online petition. More than anything, pray. Be at peace, because children of Our Lady... Do not become hysteric or frantic when attacks of the church or the world come, but we also are called to be responsible. Be responsible in responding to the graces the church gives us. Pray like you haven't prayed before. Make new time for prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit and ask Our Lady to intercede for this fifth Marian dogma that the church and the world can have a historic blast of grace which the church and the world needs so much now. Our Lady is the remedy and the time is now for the fifth dogma. Mark Mervalli saying thanks. God bless you.